All eyes have been on the presidential race, so you might have missed an important milestone that Congress just reached. Next year's Congress will feature the most women of color ever. Some are historic firsts, and others are familiar faces on the Hill. I'm Teresa Leche Fernandez. My name is Marilyn Strickland. My name is Nadia Velasquez. And I am representing the 10th Congressional District of Washington State. I represent the 7th Congressional District. I am uh, the Congresswoman elect in CD3 of New Mexico. I was elected in November 2020. I was first elected to Congress back in 1992. I was elected on November 3rd, 2020. At least 51 women of color will serve in the 2021 Congress, more than ever before. The previous record of 48 is held by the current Congress. That is uh, an incredible achievement. It is exciting and it shows that more women of color, African American women and women from all backgrounds are feeling comfortable running for office. We want to also not just elect our officials, we want to be those candidates. This year, 126 women of color ran for Congress. But despite women making up 51% of the U.S. population, they make up only 24% of congressional leaders. Women have served in the House and Senate since the early 20th century. In 1917, Representative Jeanette Rankin of Montana became the first woman to hold federal office in the United States. It wasn't until nearly 48 years later that the first woman of color was elected. In 1965, Patsy Mink, an Asian Pacific Islander, became the first woman of color to hold office in the U.S. House of Representatives. Four years later, Shirley Chisholm of New York became the first black woman to hold office in the House. In 1989, Ileana Ross Leighton of Florida became the first Latina in Congress. And in 2019, Sharice Davids and Deb Holland became the first Native American woman to hold office in Congress. Since 1965, 78 women of color have been elected to Congress. I like to do a mishmash of Lynn manuel Miranda and Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is that women, especially women of color, need to be in every room and in every place where decisions are being made about our communities. We bring with us issues that are important to our families, such as the inequities that exist when it comes to income inequality or access to capital. Having to navigate this world as a person of color, you are agile, you are flexible, and you know that you have to be adaptable. And so I think that those attributes are important to do well when it comes to policymaking. This pandemic has shown us that it is equally, you know, horrible for the nation, but its impacts are so much worse on the um, communities of color. And so we need to bring the voices of women and women of color to address the issues that we have to in Congress and to do that from a lived experience. Despite their numbers steadily increasing, women of color and women overall continue to be underrepresented in Congress. Women will make up only 24% of the Senate in 2021 and 26% of the House. We know that when women are able to get to a general election, they win. What's the problem is being able to get them to that general election. It is incredibly expensive to run for office, especially at the federal and congressional level. And so as we think about some of the barriers that keep people from running for office, I believe that there's a conversation that needs to be had to say, what are those barriers? How can we remove them? And how do we make sure that our government is a true reflection of the entire community it serves?